Welcome to our lesson on solving rational equations and inequalities. In this lesson, we will be solving both rational equations and inequalities, and along the way we will be identifying any extraneous solutions that we have. To start off with, we need to define what a rational equation is, and a rational equation is an equation that has rational expressions. Those are expressions that have fractions. So to solve those equations, we are going to eliminate the fractions by multiplying every single term in the equation by the least common denominator. We're, as we go, we're going to check our solutions, and any solution that gives us a zero in the denominator will be excluded from our list of solutions, and we call those extraneous solutions. So let's jump in and look at an example. We want to solve this rational equation. So we need to first identify what the least common denominator is. Well, the least common denominator, we know we need a z plus 2 term. And then we have a 4 and a 28. But 4 goes into 28, so 28 we're going to use as a factor, and z plus 2 is a factor. So our least common denominator will be 28 times z plus 2. So we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by that least common denominator. And then distributing that, we're going to multiply every single term by 28 times z plus 2. So I have my first term, uh, the 28's cancel, and I have 9 times z plus 2, which will give me 9z plus 18. My second term, the z plus 2's cancel, and I have 28 times 3, which is 84. And on the right-hand side, the 4 goes into 28 7 times. And I have 7 times 3, 7 times 3 is 21, and 21 times z plus 2 is 21z plus 42. Combining our like terms, we have 84 plus 18, so we get 102, and we still have 9z there, and then the right-hand side. Subtracting 9z from both sides and subtracting 42 from both sides, we end up with 60 is equal to 12z, and then dividing by 12 gives us z equal to 5. Now, you'll notice in our original equation, the only term, or the only amount, the only value z cannot be is negative 2. And since we didn't get a negative 2, we won't have any extraneous solutions here. But let's go ahead and check to make sure we get a valid solution. So here's our original equation, plugging in the value 5 wherever you see a z. And then getting like denominators here, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 4. So we get 12 28ths. And then lastly, adding these two together, we get 21 over 28, which is the same as 3 over 4. So that one does check. Here's one for you to try. You want to begin by finding your least common denominator and multiplying both sides by that least common denominator. All right, in this example, we need to remember that we can factor this denominator. So hopefully you recognize that as a difference of two squares. Remember, r squared minus 1 is equal to r plus 1 and r minus 1. So when we're figuring out our least common denominator, we already have the r plus 1 factor contained in this factor. Okay, So this will be our least common denominator. This one is really over 1. So our least common denominator here is going to be r squared minus 1. So we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by r squared minus 1. And then distributing that to each term. And then go ahead and multiply that through. So r squared minus 1 times r gives us r cubed minus r. The r squareds minus 1 cancel here, so we just have r squared minus 5. And remember this one, we had an r plus 1 contained in here, so r minus 1 is left times the numerator. And then combining like terms. And over here, we multiplied through our parentheses. We used our distributive property to get this. Okay, So if you need to pause the video and work through that, go ahead and do that. And then subtracting r cubed from both sides, those will drop out. And moving all of our terms to the left, we get r squared minus 2r minus 3 is equal to 0. Now this is a quadratic equation, and we have to figure out how to solve that. So hopefully. Uh, you remember how to solve quadratic equations. This one actually factors. Factors of 3 that differ by 2 are 3 and 1. Signs are different. The bigger one's minus. So it's going to be an r minus 3 or an r plus 1. And then set each factor equal to 0. r minus 3 equals 0. r plus 1 equals 0. 
and solve each one. So we get r equals 3 and r equals minus 1. Now go back up to your original equation. What values can we not let r be? r cannot be a negative 1 or it cannot be a positive 1. So let's look at our solutions. Did we get plus or minus 1? Well, yes, we did. r equals negative 1. So that is an extraneous solution. We can throw that out. And we're not even going to check that because we know that will give the denominator a 0 value. So the only value we need to check is r equals 3. So here is the math for checking in our original equation the value r equals 3. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that. But I wanted to show you the check in there as well. Here's another one for you to try. Pause the video, go through this one, find your common denominator first, and this one you're going to be able to factor a 4 out here, a 2 out here, and a 3 out here. So figure out what your least common denominator is and then multiply that through. Alright, to solve rational inequalities, we have three steps we're going to follow. So the first thing we're going to do is to find our excluded values. Those are the ones that make denominators 0. Then we're going to go ahead and solve the related equation. Okay, so these will be inequalities and we're going to replace the inequality sign with an equal sign and solve it. And then we're going to use the values from these two steps, anything that's excluded and then anything that's a solution, to divide a number line into different intervals. And then we're going to test values in each of those intervals to determine what solutions work. So that's a lot of weird words. Let's go ahead and try an example to see what that looks like. So our first step, here's an example, our first step is to figure out what a cannot be. Now in this example, a cannot be zero. Okay, step one is done. That would give us a zero in the denominator, so that's the only excluded value. The next step is to go ahead and change this inequality sign to an equal sign, and to solve this just like we did before. So our least common denominator in this example is going to be 8a. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8a and distribute that through. So 8a times the first term would give me 8a over 4a, which is 2. And 8a times 5 just gives me a 5, okay, because the 8a's cancel. And then over on the right-hand side, I end up with 4a. So we have 4a is equal to 7, or a equals 7 fourths, which is 1 and 3 fourths. So now that we have our value for a, this is what the only value we get. It wasn't 0, so it's not excluded. But our next step is to go ahead and divide up a number line into intervals, okay? Since a can't be 0 and we got a equals 1 and 3 fourths, that's going to help us divide our number line. We're going to have a vertical line at 0, a vertical line at 1 and 3 fourths, and we're going to test solutions in each of these sections. So on the left of 0, let's try negative 1. Between 0 and 1 and 3 fourths, let's try 1. That's an easy value. And on the right-hand side, let's test a equals 2. And when we say test that, what we're going to do is put it back into the equation and see if it gives us a true statement. So here is a equals negative 1. We're going to plug in a negative 1 everywhere you see the letter a. And this gives us a false statement. So any solutions to the left of 0 don't work. Okay? So we've tested that one. Then let's go ahead and test a equals, see if I can drop that there. Let's go ahead and test a equals 1. That one does work. We end up with 7 eighths is bigger than 1 half, so 1 half is 4 eighths, so that's a true statement. So the stuff in between here works. Remember, 0 cannot be a solution. That's eliminated. So that's going to be an open dot here, but everything up to this point works. And then we're going to go ahead and check our value for a equals 2. And so a equals 2 gives us 7 sixteenths being greater than 1 half, and that is not a true statement. So that value does not work. So then our solution set will be all of the values greater than 0, but less than or equal to 1 and 3 fourths. So here's your last problem to try. Go ahead and try this one. Remember, you've got to find the excluded values solve the related equation, and then set up intervals on a number line and test values in each of those intervals. That'll do it for this video. We'll see you next time.